During the series, Greg mentioned that the Anabaptists are the only Christian tradition that doesn't have blood on its hands. But I read recently on a Mennonite website that a scholar has shown that some Mennonites actually participated in violence yeah, against go, Jews go, go, go. under Hitler's regime. Do you know if this is true? And if so, how does this square with Greg's claim? Let me defend you on this. Defend me, please. <laughs> defend you. Please. Greg's wrong. <laughs> what a friend. It, what a friend I have in Paul. <laughs> oh, my troubles. He just creates. <laughs> yeah, Greg, Greg has said numerous times that the Anabaptist tradition is, I, th I think you said the one tradition that doesn't have blood on their hands. Yeah. Um, I, I guess I would say two things about this particular question. Um, I mean, Greg knows his Anabaptist history well enough to know that not every Anabaptist in history has lived up to the Anabaptist ideal of, of, of having no blood on their hands. Um, I mean, uh, in a city in Munster, city of Munster, uh, very early on, like, I think maybe... 1527. Was that soon? I think it was 1527. Wow. I, it was early on. It was very um, early on. A, a group of Anabaptists took over the city. They weren't Anabaptists. And no, they weren't <laughs> <laughs> They're crazy. They're nuts. They're Jim Jones called. You're trying to sanitize Baptist. the tradition. Let's be honest, all right? Um, no, no, really. Lie. In the early days, I'm talking about the first 30 years of Anabaptism, you had different perspectives of Anabaptists on the question of violence. And this is sort of is was the extreme example where one group, and there were some pretty crazy people in this group, ended I up think... taking over, and one guy proclaimed himself King David. And uh, started like in inaugurated uh, p polygamy, predominantly for himself, and uh, <laughs> killing people in the market square who didn't agree with him. And it, was, it went, went nuts, right? But when that happened, uh, that was sort of a definitive moment. And Anabaptists after that looked at what had happened there and said, that's got to be the opposite of what we do. In fact, that ended up fueling a whole uh, way of being peaceful. It was, look what happens when you try to use power over. Um, so it's uh, suffice to say, the, the um, desire to live the, the call of Jesus to love one's enemies and to be peacemakers has very quickly became the Anabaptist ideal, and the, but it doesn't mean that every Anabaptist lived up to it. Now, in response to the second part, were there Anabaptists who actually participated in the Nazi Holocaust, um, I, I suspect what's being referred to is an, there was an article that came out three years ago now in the um, uh, Mennonite Quarterly Review, a guy, uh, Gerhard Hemp, uh, Rempel, who did a study showing that there apparently were, what he says, Mennonites involved both as camp guards, concentration camp guards, and then certain Mennonite farmers and business people around the places where these, some of these Nazi concentration camps were who benefited from, from cheap labor from the Jewish people who were there, therefore arguing that Mennonites were complicit uh, in the Nazi Holocaust. What I'd want to say is he's pretty clear in his article of who he defines as Mennonite. And what he says is, I'm not claiming these people were actually practicing Mennonites at the time or even involved in a Mennonite congregation. What I'm saying is their ethnic heritage and family name sound Mennonite. <laughs> okay, if that's how we're going to define Mennonite, then perhaps. But he, he, doesn't, he can't even show that these people were like practicing Mennonites at the time, just that they had a heritage that went back to, to Mennonites. Uh, so if you've got Nazi guards who have a Mennonite name, it sounds like they're not very Mennonite anymore, um, and we're talking about just a, a heritage, uh, a family heritage. Um, that's important to know about that study, because it, it can come across as uh, different if you don't know that how, how he's defining Mennonites in that study. And that really is, I think, an important point. Um, Anabaptists, uh, with some, some who define or use this term, it simply means anybody who believes in adult baptism. And then since this crazy guy at Munster uh, who did nutso stuff, it was a Jim Jones cult, since he baptized adults, well, look, he must be Mennonite. Uh, and I'd want to define it a little more, more tightly than that. But you, you do find in the Peasants' Revolt, there was some who had just joined the Anabaptist movement, who then joined the, the uh, Peasants' Revolt. And remember, you know, they're doing this two or three years after the movement started. Uh, it takes a while for people to grow and they're... You know, 
in their thoughts and in their theology and whatever. And as, as Paul said, in the early movement, when people are coming in from all these different traditions, you've got different views, you know, and so it takes a while to work all those out. But right from the start, with the first confession, the Schleitheim Confession, you've got nonviolence at the center of it. And that's what gets repeated throughout the tradition, is the centrality of living like Christ, loving enemies, turning the other cheek. It's always at the center. So that if you find some folks who don't live up to that, who, who commit violence, they're doing it against their tradition. Whereas every other tradition had in place, it was part of what they did was as a group, they persecuted, put to death, et cetera, et cetera. And so that's what I was uh, referring to by saying it's a, the nonviolent tradition. But I probably should be, be more clear on what I mean by not having blood on their hands. Lest anyone think that everybody whose last name is Yoder never sinned. <laughs> since Yoder is the most common Anabaptist name. All Yoders are sinless. <laughs>